Los Angeles' famed Melrose District today is known as the streetwear mecca of America, if not the world. It was home to some of the most hyped streetwear brands ever, such as Supreme, Huff, Diamond Supply, and many more. During the golden age of streetwear, Fairfax Ave served as not only a place to buy many of the most popular brands of the day, but also a meetup and cultural powwow district that would shape the genre into what we know it as now. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, and in today's video, we'll discuss how Fairfax Ave became the streetwear hub of the world. But before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps us out as a channel as it invokes the algorithm gods of YouTube to bestow favor down upon us. But with that being said, now out of the way, let's jump right in. Let's climb in our time machine, if we will, and travel back to the year 2004. Supreme was still an underground skate brand. I mean, they had a cult following and all, but they weren't nowhere near the giants that they are today. Having experienced success in New York, they were now looking to branch out into an LA location. James Jeeba and co. would wind up on North Fairfax Avenue, part of a sleepy Los Angeles neighborhood known for businesses that served its mostly Jewish community. At the time, Melrose and La Brea were the primary shopping destinations in LA, but that was all about to change. Supreme's move, coupled with the cheap rent of the day, created a chain reaction and soon many of the most popular streetwear brands at the time had planted their flags on Fairfax between Rosewood and Oakwood, replacing all the Jewish businesses, just about. But little did anyone know then, before Supreme moved in, that there would be a day that the hundreds, Hell's Bells, Crooks and Castles, Diamond Supply, Huff, Hall of Fame, A-Life, and many more could all be found in one spot. Supreme, summed up in three words, would be skate, New York, and 90s. Everything Supreme does run through that filter. So Jeeba wanted to try and mimic that feel in LA, and he felt that the Fairfax district had a similar vibe. Los Angeles seemed to be the skateboard capital. The time felt right, and he wanted to offer something that wasn't currently available, but without stepping on the toes of any local skate shops. Many LA residents, upon finding out about the pending location, wondered why Supreme would choose such an unlikely spot. And it would all begin to come in the frame once construction began. It didn't start off with a bang though. Supreme had to work really hard to build a location, but over time, it would make a name for the block. And very soon after that, all the streetwear brands began to follow their lead. Next, following would be Reserve in 2005. The rent at the time was still pretty affordable, so understanding that Supreme was an anchor that people would come for, Reserve felt that it would be a good location for their business as well. Reserve would eventually become the Fresh Job flagship, but soon after they moved in, the hundreds would follow. The block was still a bit sleepy though. There was a couple of vintage thrift shops and hair salons, but there was nothing like streetwear. Nothing street oriented around at all for that matter. Later, SLB moved in, followed by Flight Club, and by now the district was beginning to gain a name, as Japanese tour buses would begin trolling the area to display some of the stores on their runs. Diamond Supplies' Nick Diamond went on record and saying that he had originally wanted to open up a hat store based off of his friends having one in Hawaii, and this was the original reason for him acquiring the location. Diamond Supply originally did t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, and skate hard goods. We did a more in-depth video on that on the rise or fall of Diamond Supply, which you should check out after this one. Links up top. But when Hall of Fame later opened a hat store on Fairfax, Nick decided to convert his space into the first official Diamond Supply location. The hundreds had also began getting pretty popular. They made an all-over print sweatshirt called Paisley Hoodie that sold out in hours and would net them 100,000 profit in one day. But not wanting to just pocket the money, or blow it on stupid purchases like cars or chains, they decided to put it back into the business. They had a desire to open a store in the same location that they already spent so much time in. They spent the entire hundred grand and some change and opened the hundreds flagship on Fairfax. Ben and Bobby also had an office upstairs and rented out the remaining office spaces to other popular brands like Hell's Bells and Crooks and Castle. Dom Kennedy even had a studio in there. Serving as a streetwear dorm of sorts, the hundreds compound would turn into a workspace for many creatives at the time. 
Within five years of Supreme opening up, every streetwear brand wanted to be on Fairfax. A-Life was there, Hall of Fame, Diamond Supply, The Hundreds, Huff. Fairfax had become a one-stop shop for anyone in the street fashion. The block blew up. Everyone wanted to move in there. And landlords, being the greedy buzzers that they are, sought to capitalize on this also. Right after Supreme opened up, they were getting around $1.50 per square foot. But three years later, they were getting $8 to $10 a square foot. It was ridiculous. Eventually, the surrounding community raised a backlash because the once quiet, lazy neighborhood of older Jewish people became an urban mecca. There was traffic, lineups, kids were hanging out, making noises. All of a sudden, you had young kids of color moving into the block and being loud, smoking weed out front. The older crowd hated this for various reasons, I'm sure, but they constantly complained. And you might think that housing all these brands from the same industry on the same block will cause extreme competition. But no, they actually worked together in a brotherhood of sorts. Understanding that they were all underdogs at the time, they would find a community. Black Fridays would draw crazy lines that wrapped around the block. Many of the brands that never offered sales would make exceptions around this time of the year. And kids went insane to get their hands on their favorite stuff for discounted prices. In the span of a few years, Fairfax became a spot where you could see people from all over. The only place in the world that was even similar were Harajuku in Tokyo and Lafayette Street in New York. Kids hanging outside of stores were kind of like a sign that your business was doing well. In fact, many of those kids would later gain fame themselves as people like Odd Future, Anwar Carrots, and Nikhil Smith were fixtures of the scene all before blowing up. The street and the whole neighborhood, in fact, became a hub for like-minded kids and celebrities, mainly rappers. There were a lot of hip hop artists because of the nature of the clothing. They were selling streetwear, so they appreciated it more. And almost every single brand had a celebrity that was either attached to it or attracted to it, which helped all the brands boom even harder. But a wise man once said, what goes up must come down and life has its bull and bear movements. Fairfax was no longer a local LA thing. It had started to go global and it also started to get saturated. It was the first time that indie brands were being looked at like they were the next wave. Many of the brands revolutionized the street fashion industry as a whole, leaving the blueprint for others to follow. But this was also the beginning of Fairfax becoming highly commercialized as well. There was a moment where people thought Fairfax was done because everyone started moving off the block. Everyone wanted to be more lavish and get away from Fairfax. And the district had gained so much fame in the past that the rent was no longer cheap. It became harder and harder for new and up and coming brands to open that. You can go down Fairfax now and it's not as crowded as it used to be. The only days it's really crowded is on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And that's because of Supreme drops. Some say the block now lacks the soul that it once had. Many of the brands that made Fairfax streetwear famous have died, but Fairfax lives on, if in memory more than actual feel that is. Fairfax not only put boatloads of money into the pockets of many brand designers, but it also inspired tons of celebs today. As we stated before, Tyler the Creator came into his own on the block and Wiz Khalifa had this to say, quote, being on Fairfax definitely helped take my career to the next level. Because being from Pittsburgh, you know, I didn't have a real market or a real crowd of people I was entertaining. When I was able to see those kids tap in and see the way that they were involved in what I had going on, I was able, as a businessman, to say, that's my target right there. Jerry Lorenzo was quoted as saying, We had our offices for my nightlife promotional company and later for Fear of God on Fairfax. Right above the flight club, Fairfax 100% influenced Fear of God. Fairfax gave many people their sense of identity. There were lots of people that came out of this. Nikhil Smith, Mickey Alfred, Julian Berman, the list goes on. Fairfax Ave was a gateway of sorts. We watched people come from nothing becoming bosses. Everybody getting mansions, everybody getting cars, everybody being able to take care of their families. It was inspirational and Fairfax was an open book to learn if you paid attention. Over the last few years, the block has lost some of the luster that it once had. In 2020, the district got hit pretty hard by the, uh, 
protests. And many of the stores were vandalized and robbed, not to mention spending the lump sum of that year not being able to open to the public. These things were bad for business everywhere, and I'm sure it's been difficult for the stores on Fairfax too. I personally haven't been on Fairfax since 2019, the last time I went to LA, and sadly, probably won't be going back anytime soon with the recent mandates and all. It actually breaks my heart because the district was such a vibe back in the day. But you know what they say, when one door closes, another one opens. The reason we decided to include this one in the rise and fall of a streetwear brand series is because while doing research for some of the other videos, we kept noticing how large a role Fairfax Ave played in the success of many of them. The rise and fall of many of those brands is intricately tied to the ups and downs of the area itself. When they were booming, Fairfax was the spot. Now that they have passed, so to speak, Fairfax mourns. But what do you think? Is Fairfax Ave still the same to you? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know about your memories on Fairfax Ave and what the block is like today. Also, if you like the video, then don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to be updated whenever we drop another video just like this one, then hit the subscription button and the notification bell. You'll be sent out emails whenever we drop our next video. We do these on a weekly basis. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com. Until next time, signing out. Peace.